What is good, everybody? Today we are reviewing the AEW Unmatched Collection Series Number Nine Wheeler Yuta, John Moxley, and Claudio Castelloni figures. In short, this is the Blackpool Combat Club. We took a look at Brian Danielson and Jeff Hardy yesterday. If you guys missed that review, definitely go check that out. If you want these figures, you can do so by going to Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com, and checking them out over there. You can purchase some. Use code MD Toys to save yourselves ten percent. I always tell people if you're going to order a full set, if you're going to be ordering a hundred, two hundred dollars worth of product over there, do not use the free shipping. Shipping code. It'll take forever to ship. The saver free or the free saver shipping or whatever it is always takes forever in my experience. So if you use a 10% code and then select priority shipping, you'll get it faster and it'll basically be like you're getting free shipping. It'll just be fast. You know what I mean? So say it's 150 bucks for like a full set. Then you use the code MD Toys, select priority shipping, and then essentially it'll be around 150, 155 bucks for that whole entire lot ship, but it'll be priority instead of the damn free saver shipping. You get what I'm saying? Anyways, here's John Football Moxley looking pretty Moxley good, I would say. This head sculpt impresses me. I did not expect to love this head sculpt as much as I'm loving it. Also, my finger has been sliced, so I did wrap it up a little bit right there. So, always wrap it up. John Moxley in silver. We do have unmatched collection here. You got John Moxley there. Looking pretty good. We got a lot of newness going on with this figure in some in some cases, but we do have Moxley back there. Also, the bottom of the box is kind of warped, so he's wanting to fall over, which kind of makes me upset. But we also have Wheeler Yuta over here, which is cool. He Looks good. I like the head sculpt. I like the Blackpool Combat Club shirt. Got the Pure Championship. Love this white and red on the gear with the blood soaked. I think it all looks good. Kind of looks like every figure this man gets, it's got blood on it. So it's just crazy. But on the back, you get Yuta. You got Yuta there. And he looks he looks pretty damn good. I, I like this. I'm, I'm digging this. I think I'm looking forward to that figure a lot. And then this is the first Claudio figure that I have unboxed here on the channel. And the head sculpt looks a lot better in person here than I'm seeing it. Looking into the box, seeing the head sculpt, this looks a whole lot better than I was expecting. But his name's on the side. You got standard, unmatched collection. He's looking and shredded right there. Jason Statham in his entire deal. Got the Blackpool Combat Club shirt in there, but I have my worries about this figure, which we'll, of course, dive into. But this is going to be a three-in-one. We're going to cover all three of these guys and my battery on my rotating base is out. So we are not going to put these guys on the rotating base. We're just going to unbox them right here, and then we're going to dive into each guy's accessories. But with that being said, let's shut the hell up. Let's not wait any longer. Let's crack these guys out of the packaging and find out what the Blackpool Combat Club from Unmatched Series 9 is all about. Let's get them like... Get them right here and just... So here's our Blackpool Combat Club Wheeler, Yuta, John Moxley, and Claudio figures out of the packaging. I like a lot of the things going on here. There are some things that I really adore about these figures. I don't know why I said that. It's kind of a weird statement to use there, but uh, I don't care, alright? It's my review. Go make your own review, alright? Use your own vocabulary to describe the essence of these figures. But I do like a lot of the things going on here. Now, I don't think they're perfect by any stretch, but we're going to dive into all those things, break down everything. I'm I'm liking some stuff. I'm not liking some stuff, but I guess what we'll do is we'll go left to right. We'll start with Wheeler, Yuta, dive into the accessories, dive into the Wheeler Yuta, back it up, do the same thing with Mox, back it up, do the same thing with Claudio, work our way all the way through these figures, and then we will find out if these figures are worth a damn, how they compare to their other releases, and get into the nuts and bolts of it. So getting into Wheeler Yuta's accessories, we get some cloth goods, we get a championship, which is always nice to have. We do have this nice BCC Blackpool Combat Club shirt with the blood splatter. It says Blackpool Combat Club. The Blackpool Combat Club logo down here always reminds me of COD for some reason, I don't know. But it is a Velcro shirt, it's got the Velcro on the back, and it looked pretty good good on the figure in the packaging. I'm not going to I took it off immediately because you guys know with the staining issues and such, I didn't want to leave it on the figure if you guys weren't aware. Most of these figures that come with these black shirts specifically usually have some sort of staining on them and so I didn't want to take any risk. But I do enjoy the cloth goods and this is a nice looking shirt. You could actually put this on any member of the BCC too so that's pretty cool. This figure also comes with the Ring of Honor Pure Championship which is something we've already seen before. I think it came with the Ringside Exclusive Blood and Guts Wheeler Yuta so that's also something to note if you guys are interested in that. But it looks good. I like this championship and I'm glad to have another copy of this. I'm always, you know, the more championships the merrier and it's a good looking title. I like to see this. I've seen this this belt in person actually and it looks really good. I like this. is a good championship to have. And last but not least, he does come with a pair of grappling hands. Just your standard AEW Jazzwares grappling hands. Then he also comes with a pair of fists to of course beat the hell out of people. So for Wheeler Yuta starting out the head sculpt, I like this head sculpt a lot actually. I, I like the likeness here. I can't remember if this came with the blood and guts figure or not. I want to say it did but I could be wrong about it but one thing you'll notice is mine has like some schmutz on it, man. Are you seeing all this green schmutz? Like, it's on the ear, it's on the face. Like, what the hell is going on there? It's like, it's, I don't know, it's like, you know when you get silly string in a can? It looks like it kind of exploded all over his face. I had to get an exacto knife and, like, pick that off. I don't know. But uh, the hair 
cut looks good, his beard looks good and everything. I don't really care for this torso for Wheeler Yuta, even though, I don't know, I guess it is accurate. I don't, I don't know, it just looks like the neck looks a little long and my shoulder over here is a little bit loose there. Black wrist tape. It's a bit gappy here in the thighs as well. It's like that leg's not on all the way, but if you rotate it around, it, it, I guess it's, it, it's there, I guess. But these tights are cool. I do like these tights. You get the white in there with the blood splatter. You get the BCC in there, which I think looks pretty awesome. Very cool gear. I do like this gear. I think it's a sick gear there. I don't know. This figure just feels kind of jacksy to me. It feels very, like, look at these boots. These boots remind me of, like, the Dennis Rodman Toy Biz figure a little bit. And then the legs are kind of loose. Like, I don't know. He just feels off to me. He doesn't feel compact. And I would not want to fed with this guy. Like, I don't know. He just reminds me of, like, a finishing moves Jax figure a little bit. And I, I hate that. I didn't feel that way about his Blood and Guts figure. I felt like his Blood and Guts figure was better. But let's bring that figure in and do some comparisons here. So for your Wheeler Yuta comparisons, I mean, the gear is different because the lower legs are different. You know, he wore boots here versus the shoes here but i remember not liking the feet on this figure either but i don't i don't know man like let's do a little let's just see what this looks like so then his whole damn everything's about to be bloody there you go that looks good besides the schmutz on his face but then you have look at this that looks badass because he's all bloody and then he's got the bloody tights so that kind of looks pretty sweet but i don't know something about this it's, it just doesn't feel compact i feel like the figure is kind of not necessarily falling apart on me but it kind of gives me that looseness i i'm not confident in posing him around and that kind of worries me a little bit but that i guess does it for your wheeler yuda comparisons at the end of claudio we'll take a look at all the combat club up next to each other and for moxley's accessories we do get about the same as you get with wheeler yuda you get some quality cloth goods you get a championship belt and some interchangeable hands but with mox you do get this hoodie that has the drawstrings but it velcros in the front actually and it is a blackpool combat club hoodie which I think looks really awesome. You have the logo there, and if you flip it on the back, it says Forged in Combat with the AEW logo. Another sweet accessory here. I always love the cloth goods. I just wish they didn't stain. If they didn't stain, this would be some of the best quality goods you could get in the game. Now, I do have a soap method where you soak the cloth goods of AEW figures in hot water with soap, and you will, like, massage it. Like, generally wash them by hand in the sink with hot water and dish soap or Dawn soap, whatever, and then let that air dry and then do it again. And most of the time, it does fix that issue. You won't have to worry about that staining, but that's something that you don't want to have to do. But, you know, when the cloth goods are this badass, you want to use them, man. So if you want to use those things, you're going to have to do that. And that's kind of just the unfortunate situation we're in right now. And then we also get the coveted AEW World Heavyweight Champion which is a great championship. I think it looks fantastic. It's always looked good. I've always been a fan of it. When will they get a new design? I don't know, but right now I still like I think it's still a fresh design. It looks very clean. You know what it is. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Dumb reference. Very dumb. But we've seen this countless times in the AEW figure line, but it's always nice to have another one. And then for our fisted hands, we do get the tattoos on the hands. Now, I don't know if this is accurate to have it on both sides. I think it is, but you do get the tattoos on the hands, which I don't think we've seen before on Mox, and he does have his wedding band or his wedding tattoo there, which is also very cool. So I like that. I like this on these Mox fists. And of course, you know he's beating the hell out of people. And then even on his mic holding or weapon wielding hands, we also get the tattoos and he gets the wedding band hand again. So very consistent across the board. Very nice to see. You love to see that. List of things you love to see. That. So we have a brand new Mox head sculpt here that I like a lot. I like how pissed off and determined he is. This is probably my favorite Mox head sculpt outside of the one that we got on his initial figure, his Unrivaled Series 2. The Unrivaled 12 wasn't bad, but this one is my favorite, I think. I like how pissed off he is. This is nuts. I, I like this sculpt a lot. I like the likeness. This just looks like a, a classic Mox. Like, he's gonna beat the hell out of you. I just like the coloration, the hair, everything, man. Looks great. And I also love the addition of the chest hair here, which I think really adds to it. And I like how bulky the figure looks, man. He just looks jacked. He's got his tattoos here on the forearms, which are accurate. They're not overly sized. He's got black wrist tape and tattoos. He even has his camo pants in here, which I know isn't necessarily accurate now, but it looks badass. It's sick as hell. I think the camo pattern looks good. All these logos get Blackpool Combat Club. Mox skull over here. Very clean. Now, one thing about it, about this figure, is, I mean, the biggest thing about it is going to be probably the scaling, but, I, I mean, I just like this figure a lot. I'm really digging the Mox. I mean, you could be looking at the best Mox available for purchase that you could possibly see. Now, one thing that I forgot to do with Wheeler Yuta that I can bring him in and do here is just some articulation, but, I mean, like, like his ab crunch pops off. He does have all this. He can kick forward pretty damn good, which is what I wanted to show off here. You know, he can kick forward pretty good. He can obviously do the splits. He's on ball joints, man. I mean, like his legs feel so damn loose, but double jointed knee is good. 
You do get boot swivel here, which is pretty tight. Ankles move down and up. And he has a pretty good ankle pivot. So articulation is not something that these figures really struggle with. Ab crunch on Mox is a bit eh, but he does have a ball hinge here. So he can look all the way up, downs like this. And then he can look up for the most part, which is good. You get the full range here. You get the bicep swivel. You get the double jointed arms, which is always good to see. But he can kick forward really good as well. Look at that right there. I mean, he can go above 90 if you leave him back a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. You know, thigh swivel. Got the splits. He's got a double jointed knee like we touched on. It looks pretty good for the most part. You might could get that cinched in a little bit tighter if you wanted to. Boot swivel. They go down and up like we've stated. But this guy feels way more compact than the Wheeler Yuta. Now, could he last in a fed match? I'm not entirely sure, you know. But it, it, Moxes of the past really would worry me in that area. But, I mean, it's still a damn good figure. I'm, I like this Mox a lot, especially aesthetics-wise. Even if he, you know, even if he would get loose, which I'm not seeing that any of that here, I still like the figure a lot, and it, it may damn well be his best AEW figure to date. So for your Mox figure comparisons, we do have a bunch of different Mox releases from AEW here. This is not every single one. We're missing some chases and stuff, but for the most part, from left to right, we have the Unrivaled Series 2, the Unrivaled 8, we have the Shop AEW Exclusive Mox, the Unmatched Series 9, the Unrivaled 12, the Ringside Exclusive Exploding Barbar Deathmatch, and the Unrivaled 5 over here. And I like all of these, but I'm liking the skin tone. This is more of an updated skin tone. The rest of them, besides the original, have more of like a grayish tone, fleshy gray. This looks a lot more realistic. It kind of throws me here, but it's a little bit more yellow, but the chest hair edition looks so good, and I like this attire probably better than the rest too. This is great, and... I mean, I guess if you really wanted to, you could take these different legs and pop this on here. Like, if you want, you know, gray pants mocks right here, you know, you could pop this off. It does have a little bit of fake blood on it still, but look at that. You can pop that on there. And now, look, now I have a mox in a different attire, so... That may be worth the pickup for you to make different moxes and different gears and stuff if you wanted to do so, but I really like this mox figure. And then for Claudio's accessories, you get cloth goods and interchangeable hands, much like the rest of the field here, but he doesn't come with a championship, but he does come with this sick-ass entrance shirt, which I would replicate more of a tracksuit shirt, but he does have his nice logos here, which I think is very cool. You have the Swiss logo there, you know, his cross logo. You got the Black Combat, Blackpool Combat Club, nothing on this sleeve, and then you flip it around. It's got Claudio Castelloni on there. Very cool, dude. Very sick, and I don't know. I've read a thing where you can boil these hot goods. Like, if you boil these shirts in hot water, you can peel the logos off, and maybe you can. You can put this on somebody else. But it would be cool to kind of get some pick up some extras to try and see if you could do that, to put cloth goods on a bunch of different figures. I think that may be worth the move there if you're able to, you know, track down a bunch of these or get these on clearance or something like that. That may be something you want to do. But this is very high quality quality love to see this and then for interchangeable hands you do kind of get these like cupping style hands which are very i don't know they're very odd and they're very tiny i think these are smaller than standard hands i don't know I, i'm not a big fan of these and then you get standard fisted hands, which seem to be a little bit bigger than the other signature hands we just saw, but, you know, he's always beating the hell out of people. So getting into Claudio, we do have the head sculpt here, which has some good likeness. I don't really hate it. It kind of reminds me of, I don't know, it definitely has Jason Statham vibes, but they kind of look similar. They look like they could be brothers, in my opinion, but I like the face sculpt. I think the head shape's good, the 5 o'clock shadow and everything does look good on this figure. I like it. Look at that right there. Dude, that looks like Cesaro. That looks damn good, or Claudio, whatever you want to say, but... I like how jacked he is, too. I like the hair on the torso. I like the striations on the shoulders right here and how big his arms are. I mean, guy's an absolute unit. I think what messes it up is that the, you know, this guy's very tall, and I know he's supposed to be tall. He's a tall individual, but I think where he gets that freakish tallness is this lower piece is too tall. Maybe, like, if this came down a little bit more, it wouldn't look as freakishly tall, but I do like how jacked the figure is and how accurate that is, but the tights look pretty good. I do like the chase better in the camo, but this is still sweet. He's got the black, gold, red you got the swiss got all this stuff going on you have these kick pads in here they're not really kick pads they're the flat boots with the laces on the back oh, oh. but it's got the golden red in there and then he does have the laces on the back which i think this is a brand new boot mold which looks good and these boots are pretty clean they look like kick pads but they're not but i could see you know we've seen this from mattel a similar version of these but i like the wrinkles and everything but in terms of the articulation he can look down well and he can look up well any guy that's bald they usually can look up and down well on a ball hinge because there's no beard to prevent them from looking forward and there's no long hair or hair sculpt to prevent them from looking up. But uh, in terms of ab crunch, actually surprisingly good ab crunch. You know, all things considered, you wouldn't think so because he's so tall, but he actually, look at that, dude. He can ab crunch, probably one of the better ab crunches you'll find on an AEW figure. But he has all the standard articulation up top. Kick forward is a little bit limited, I would say, compared to Wheeler Yuta and John Moxley, though. 
when you kick him forward and you lean him back, he can't nearly get up as high, you know? And I mean, I, that's like stretching it before the torso pops off right there. And then, you know, he can do the, you know, the split seats. He's got the tight cut. You do get the double jointed knee in there. Got the kick pad or the boot rotation ankle rocker, and they move down and up which is pretty much the standard for AEW articulation here, but I really don't have the Elite 93 Cesaro to compare this to, but I can compare it to kind of a fix-up I did because I felt like the Elite 93, I think it was, was too tall. And that's going to be this one here, and you can see the tallness factor here. I did put some Goldberg legs on there. And I just felt like the uh, the Elite 93 initially was way too tall for me personally, and you can see the height differences between these two. Now, the original Elite 93 probably would move up maybe about like right there. They'd probably be close to the same height. I can't remember off the top of my dome, but these look pretty, I mean, they look similar, you know, you get that, uh, I like how pissed off he is. I like this head sculpt better than this one, though. This one kind of looks like my math teacher from high school. Great teacher, by the way. Shout out to Andy. Maybe it was Andrew. Who cares? Nonetheless, he's a damn good teacher. I had maybe like five good teachers my entire life, and he was one of them. Before a BCC comparison, we do have Brian Danielson from the same wave. We have Wheeler Yuta, John Moxley, all up next to Claudio. And you will notice that Claudio does tower over mostly everyone here, but I mean, he does in real life, so I don't think that's the biggest deal ever. But I know that a lot of people don't like how tall he is, which I can understand. I don't think it's just the worst thing ever, but you know, all these eight. AEW figures are way too big for WWE elites, which is mainly what the deal is. I think people want their AEW figures to scale with their WWE figures, and that's kind of where the, you know, the displacement comes from. But then here he is up next to the Unmatched Series 5 Danielson with the fix-up. This is the fix-up Danielson with the MJF torso. It does have a t-shirt on there, but I did want to kind of show the comparison. I mean, he is massive. He is definitely tall. And then I, I guess for one more comparison, you can see, like, here's the Jeff Hardy figure. And you can see just, like, the range of heights there. I mean, he's got, let's get a, a good WWE Elite in here so you can kind of see how he scales. So here is the From the Vault Kane, and they are essentially about the same exact height. This is the From the Vault Ringside Exclusive Kane Elite. And that just kind of gives you a scale size on what this guy looks like. But I think that about does it for this 3-in-1 AEW Unmatched Series 9 review of the Blackpool Combat Club or Wheeler Yuta, John Moxley, and Claudio Castelloni, man. I had a lot of fun reviewing these guys. You know, at the end of the day, I'll go left to right. Wheeler Yuta, I think the ringside exclusive is probably better, even though I hated the feet on that figure. I do like this gear. I like this head sculpt. I like the accessories. I just, I don't know, man. I feel like the figure just isn't stable enough for me, and it would really bother me. I know if you're just going to leave it on a shelf just for Wheeler Yuta to stand there. I think it'd be fine, but I would not fed with it. I, I personally wouldn't. You can take the risk if you want to. I like the gear and everything. Mine had the schmutz on the face too. I don't know what was up with that. I hope that's not an every figure thing. But I like the accessories, like I said. I, I like the gear. I like Wheeler Yuta. I just, yeah, man, I don't know about all of that. I don't know about that figure. It just does not feel stable. The Mox is the best Mox they've made to date, in my personal opinion. I love the cloth goods hoodie, and there's so many different Mox shirts we've gotten over the years you could probably pair with it. I love the gear. love the head sculpt. I think the Mox is an automatic cop. If you're a Mox fan, or you haven't had, you know, your ultimate mocks, I would pick this one. This is the best mocks to me personally, in my humble opinion. I would go with this mox, no doubt. Every day I'd book this one. And then for Claudio, I like this figure. I like the head sculpt. I like the accessories. I think it's worth the take, you know? You know, I don't know how accessorized he is, but he feels tight. He doesn't feel super loose and everything like that. I like the track jacket. I like the things going on with the Cesaro slash Claudio. And it's a good head sculpt. So, I mean, what do you want, man? I think that, you know, adding him to your AEW roster in this form is nice. And I didn't really care for the Elite 93, though. I think I had mixed feelings on that figure. I can't remember off the top of the dome. But it had some cool pieces here and there. It's just difficult to judge. I can't remember my exact feelings on that figure because it kind of shifts here and there. Especially when I'm changing the formula and such. I can't remember what I quite felt there. You may have to go watch the Elite 93 Cesaro review maybe if you want. But yeah, I mean, I, two out of three, I'd probably get them. But the Mox, I would pick over all of them. If I had to pick one out of these four, I think the Danielson is also good. If you guys missed our Jeff Hardy Danielson review from yesterday, definitely check that out. But at the end of the day, I think most of these are worth the cop. I just, uh, there are some questionable things about it, which we've discussed in this video. But if you guys want to grab these figures, you can do so over Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. I am trying to further along this outro because I put these shirts on just for the outro. And I want to, you know, I'm going to shoot with them on there. And then I'm going to uh, quickly take them off because I got to wash them before I use them in any circumstance, whether it's display or whatever. I got to get these shirts the hell up out of here. So I am going to do that right now. But anyways, man, that is going to wrap up of the video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all you fellas over there. You guys are absolutely goaded. Always appreciate all the fellas over there, man. You guys are amazing. But that is going to wrap the video. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on these down in the comment section below. I'm getting the hell out. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>